Hi, it's Lil from Made by Marley. Welcome back to our channel. Today I'm taking part in another furniture challenge and today the challenge is Sparkle and Shine and Glitter and it's hosted by Meg from Lovely Jubbly Furniture and the playlist for um, everybody's entries will be listed in our description. And um, I'm not sure if it's a vote thing or whatever, but this is what I'm taking part in today. So what's my piece? yeah it's a bit ugly <laughs> it's a bit ugly isn't it uh it's an old pot cupboard maybe it's a bedside cabinet not quite sure it had something on here which martin removed for me because i didn't like it and it's had a sand uh, it has had two white downs so far but it's just that's not very nice really uh inside i'm gonna paint that as well so the first thing i'm gonna do is i'm gonna just get martin to remove the door and just sit aside while we decide on the sort of blend for the outside and I'm just going to paint the inside a plain colour but we'll come back to that in a minute. Okay so the door's been removed I'm going to set the door to the side right now because we're going to do a wee bit of paint pouring into this recess here but I'm setting that just away to the side just now. Now colours I'm going to be using today are Provence, Florence, um, Jiminy, and I have two other different types of paint here. I think this one's real blue, and this one's O'Neill. So you can kind of get the sort of color spectrum that I'm going for there. Lots of blues and greens. It's probably giving it away what I'm going to do already, but I'm kind of going to forge on. I'll tell you what I'm doing. So for those that know me, I paint artisan furniture. I hand paint my furniture. I don't spray it. Um, I do art on my furniture, I do a lot of bohemian, a lot of really eclectic statement furniture and I sell it here in the UK. I normally paint in my stable, so if you, you don't usually watch me, um, this is a whole new setup. So my usual followers will think, oh this is plush because my studio is an old stable and it's normally very cold. So here I am in the cosy warm. So all I'm going to do on this today is I'm just going to play around with the paint. It's not quite a blend, well it will be a blend, but it's just... I'm not even sure I'm going to graduate the colours up. Um, I want to achieve a look, but it's really the door, the front door, that's the statement of this piece of furniture. The rest is just window dressing. Obviously, I'm going to get to all the glamour and the glitz and the shine and everything that's somewhere along the way, but this is just me putting a canvas coat on my work and uh, I'll probably do two coats of this as well. So I'm going to start with the florals and... I think I'm going to start kind of putting this down, probably down near the base. Another new thing for me as well is normally when I'm in the stable, I don't have to worry too much about raising things up off floors, but I'm not even going to tell you what room I'm painting in, but all I'm going to say is I shouldn't be painting in here, but I will say it's got a log burning fire, so, <laughs> so I, I'm feeling like I've won a watch. So I'm kind of doing something like that so far. I want to, I'm not too worried whether I keep it in sort of I don't want it in stripes I know that much so I think my next one I'm going to go in and I'm not cleaning my brush yet I'm just going for it so I'm going to do something like this here and I'm going to work that down into here back and forward just something like that now I'm probably going to go into my green next and I'm going to do this on obviously all the sides and um, the thing with the blender you're really kind of going up and down till you get what you're looking for you're bringing your darker up into your light and your light down into your dark um, not want it to be as I want to bring a little bit of this back in here so that I still kind of keep a, a reasonable sort of shape that I'm looking for yeah now I want to introduce a bit of a dark now, so I'm going to do this now onto here. And this is where it'll get quite fun because I want the majority of this colour. Now I've still got the light in my brush and you can see that there. What I'm going to do up here is I'm just going to put the um, florence up the top, but obviously with the blue mixed in. And this is why I'm saying, you know, I'm just going to have a wee fiddle around with the paint until I get to where I want. You can see I'm going up and down it. I'm not, you know, I'm not too, and I think 
really I don't maybe want that as green and I'm just going to go ahead now and I'm going to do this um on all sides now this is just my my canvas coat and I'm going to actually have to wait till this dry and do all this all over again I'm going to paint the inside I'm just going to pick one of these colors for the inside and it will probably be Jevony, which is this blue here no I'm not probably going to use this real blue for the inside of my piece so I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to do that because there's nothing more boring than watching somebody do a sort of canvas coat. I shouldn't have maybe done that there. Um, but I'll get on and do that and we'll come to the next part. Okay, so I've done my two coats on my exterior of my cupboard. And I just actually carried the sort of blend inside as well. I was having so much fun. So it's a two coats. It's nearly dry. But while it's finished drying, we're going to work on the front. So I'm just going to... I put my door on some bags here because I don't know how messy this is going to be. Now, I am going to be doing a bit of paint pour on here. I'm using Annie Sloan paint. And when you water it down, it's a one-to-one. -one. You have to keep stirring it because it will start to settle back down in the bottom. Um, it's a one-to-one -one ratio. So however much water, it should kind of be like, like that. Yeah? You want it to be able to pour quite move, and move quite well so i have this color which is provence and i have this color here which is the blue which is Givigny. yeah i'm going to be adding some of this odoneal green i'm not watering it down because this one's quite a runny paint as it is i'm not putting the dark color in which plays quite a large part on the exterior because the design work i'm going to be doing off the top is going to be darker and I've got some silver pouring experience, as it's called. Um, I'll get Martin to drop a link um, for it. It's silver, not a colour I would generally use. But this challenge is about sparkle and shine. And we'll get to the shine at some point. Um, so I have these three colours. I think that's probably all I was going to use for this. So now all you need to do is put your paint on. I'm um, just going for a sort of marbly sort of pattern like this with my blue. Whoop, a bit of blue there. Blue. And my, don't worry about these edges, we're going to be painting these. My silver. And around, around it. Mark around there. Now, it's going to get a bit noisy. I'll get Martin to put some music over the top of this. I'm just going to blow it with my heat gun. I realise I haven't put the green on it. <laughs> Helps if you put all the colours on. Try that again. I'm just going to kind of manipulate it a little bit now. You don't want to do it too much because you don't want it. Um, you don't want it you to kind of lose too much of your detail. So I'm thinking this is all I want. I want it quite muted on the back, the background of this. Now, this is going to take a bit of a hot minute to dry. So. Good job I'm working in the warm. If I've been doing it in the studio, a I week. <laughs> Martin says it would have taken a week. Um, there. Now, I'm just going to leave that alone now. I've got a cloth here. I'm just going to wipe off 
these parts here just now while it's drying. Um, and once it's dry, we'll start all the design work. This is me just kind of getting my sort of base together. There we go. So I'm just going to push this down here on this edge here. There we go. So it's filled up the edges. Come on, get in there. Let's get it in. Okay, so that's how we're going to leave that just now. Okay, so this is completely dry, and if you haven't uh, kind of got it already, what I've done is I've tried to do the colours on my little cupboard the same as Peacock. Okay, so that kind of gives away what I'm doing. I'm doing an Indian inspired sort of Peacock design. So we'll just move that back around there. Now, this is how it came out. Ba -da -ba -da. Now, I got a little bit overzealous because I wanted it to dry quickly. And I used the heat gun here and it kind of separated, but I like it even more, so I wasn't bothered. But it's probably better just to let it dry naturally. It's just that it kind of, with me using two different types of paint, because I was using an Annie Sloan and a cell sealing paint to do this. And the cell sealing paint obviously wanted to dry really quick, but the Annie Sloan wanted to kind of flush around a bit. So that's why it's just separated. But if you just leave it, it'll just do its own thing naturally. I recommend that. So I know that my door goes on this way. So I want to paint it this way. So I'll try not to paint too much upside down. So I want to do just kind of simple it because this is when I'm going to bring in the, the sort of sparkly accents. Glasses on. So, you know, you could be foolish and maybe do draw it in first. But um, I'm not going to be doing that. Um, so I want sort of teardrop shapes. And... Because there's a nice design here and here, I don't want to cover that too much. I want the main stem coming up to about here. So I think I'm going to do something. I'm going to paint it in this dark colour first. And then I'll put all the lighter tones and all the sparkly bits on after that. So this is going to be the centre. And I'm going to have three of them, I think. Three peacock feathers. So this is going to be the first one. Get a bit more paint on my brush. Ah, uh, I think this second one is probably going to be, oopsie daisy, I'm trying not to really, I mean this is dry but it's not completely cured. That's my third one here and I'm going to do a bit more paint on my brush. My third one probably about here. So for this I'm just using a fine liner. I have fine liner brush. That's the brushes that if you follow my channel I, I use these quite a lot. They're just kind of like they're thin artist brushes that script brushes and you'd get there in the end. And they're, they're generally used for kind of doing typography and things like that. But they're really good for keeping a nice neat line. So now I want to join these all up. And I'm just kind of going to go for it. Martin's going to have his intake of breath as per usual. Yeah, so yeah. yeah, so I think we're going to do something like this. Join this one to this one. And we'll have this one coming down here. Like this. So we're going to do... Um, you can if you're if you're kind of like this isn't your comfort zone you can just look at some um, pictures of some peacock feathers um, some of them are kind of wavy and something like this but as I said this is just kind of like a base before we put the colors into it um, so just nice and free and nice and loose um, there's nothing complicated. I picked this one so that, you know, anybody could kind of just like copy it. I want this one to come. And the reason why I'm spacing out all my parts of my feathers is I'm going to put jewels on the end of them. Because normally you would do them really in tight, but because I want to do something like this, you know. I'm... So you get the sort of 
I want these all to kind of join up like there are three here at the bottom. This could be a bit thicker. And this one down to here. And in there. So yeah, yeah. I think that's I'm gonna let that dry for a minute and we'll come back again and I'll do the next part. So I'm just painting in these feathers now. Um, I'm just trying to get the colours that are kind of like a peacock's feather and obviously that complement, um, you know, the piece of furniture that it's going to go on. I'm going to have to touch up this side bit here. I went and touched it with painty hands, so I'll get that. I guess you see that. So that colour's going in there. Clean your brush. And then I'm putting a lot of, got a little bit of Annie Sloan's Honfleur, which is a brown. And I'm going to lay that down next. Just around there. Like that. Maybe a little bit thicker at this end. And as I said, it helps if you have a kind of a reference picture. I'm just I'm now winging it. And the next thing I have, which is a little bit of a curveball, is I have some glittery um, nail varnish here to do this part because obviously we need spark on shine. <laughs> well, I'll put a link in for that as well. <laughs> this was actually really expensive nail varnish, but I just could never see me kind of, you know, it doesn't go with a job. I think I wore it at Christmas once. Um, there now, just let that dry off a minute. It dries pretty quick, and then I'm just for these parts here. I was just using one of the original blues, which was Giverny. I've got some here on my mixing mat ready, and it's just a little touch there, a little touch there, touch there, and a little touch there. It's kind of little blobs, you just kind of, and then. The gold to represent a sort of yellowy goldy colour in the peacock, but I thought maybe we're looking for a sparkle and shine here. And the next colour um, I'm going to put in the middle is a little bit of this original that I painted the external edges with, which is the real blue. And I'm just going to do something like that in between them both, like that. Now. I want to just tidy this up a little bit because some of it's a little bit untidy. That's not how they look in real life. I don't know why I'm whispering. It's like I'm doing something wrong. But this is your own interpretation now. I need to go back in with this brown here and fix this line here. So I'm reasonably happy with that. Reasonably. It's all right. Uh, next, what I'm going to do is I have. Um, some of these, which I bought, I've not actually opened them. I should have maybe opened them before I started this challenge. Um, I bought them um, from, I'm just going to sit them on here just now. I bought these from um, Amazon. Now, I want to get, see these tiny little ones? I'm going to be gluing these on, onto the ends like this with glue. Should have maybe got tweezers, but you get the gist. It's going to take me a bit of a hot minute to get them organised. I think I might just put one of the heart ones in sort of here like that. And to glue these on, I've got No Nails glue because this is all going to be sealed over the top. Um, just let me kind of set up and with my glue, and we'll glue some. We'll do one. We'll glue one together. So what I'm doing is I'm just. Putting the glue on now. I've glued all the bigger ones on the way down, but the little ones are really tricky. But can I just say, once they're on, they're really stuck. They're on. It's just that this is the most trickiest thing. What kind of glue are you using there, though? <laughs> Martin's asking me what kind of glue I'm using. I am using. This isn't a glue I would usually use for furniture, but once I think it's been sealed and everything, I think it's all going to be quite solid and tight. But this is a. Gorilla glue and it's a gel, um, 
super glue and it should do the trick. Um, normally I would use a heavy duty glue, my normal glue, but the thing is about that is it would have splashed out over the edges. Now, I had a whole design sort of idea in my head and what I was going to do all the way around these was put uh, my relief, um, but what, it's been over in my stable and it's really solid and it's just not going to work. So I'm going to have to improvise somehow. And the way I'm going to do that is I was going to put gold leaf around it. I'm so blind, I can hardly tell if they're sparkly up or not. Um, I was going to put gold leaf around the edges. Um, I can't tell. Aha! Um, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you in a minute what I'm going to do. Because I want to bring some more gold into the design. It's just not sparkly enough yet. And the challenge was sparkles, so... Oh, that one went on first time. Anyway, I'm not going to sub subject you to you watching me glue these on because whew, I'm losing the will to live. The big ones, as the as you go further down the design, like these bigger ones were easy, but see these little ones, they just keep they keep moving about. And if you jolt them in any way when they're first curing, then they don't they won't they won't cure correctly. So you have to just kind of persevere. Martin has told me in countless times so far to go and get tweezers, but I refuse to give in. I can't tell if that's the right way or not. Looks good. Oh no, if that's the right way. Martin, you tell me it looks good when it's the wrong <laughs> way around. If there's any of these the wrong way around at the end, it's, right because, it's because Martin has much better vision than I have. I have so bad eyesight. Um, There. Now, all these other ones that I did earlier are, are totally secure and... So what I'm going to do now is I am going to get my liner brush and um, I'm going to just queue up my gold leaf and we're going to put gold leaf in between all these feathers. Okay, so here I'm just using the same um, script brush and as I said, I was wanting to really use this out with my gold relief, but because it's, it's no good, um, I'm just going to use this. I'm just going to do some. I'm embellishing it now. This is why things take me, me way much longer than they should. Um, I'm just putting this on. If you've never used gold leaf before and you're new to watching me, this is just gilding adhesive and I've cut my gold leaf into strips because they're going to go around the edges as well. And I'll show you how to apply this. You just apply this like a glue to wherever, wherever your glue is, the gold leaf is literally going to stick to. So try not to dribble it anywhere because if not, you're going to have a gold patch that um, is a wee bit tricky to get off, actually. Um, ask me how I know. Um, so that's all I'm doing here. And this is just, I'm not covering up all of the blue. I'm just kind of just giving it a little bit of, just a wee bit of gold. I think it just, with the silver, I wanted even more sparkles. So, and I don't think there's anything wrong with that because that's the challenge. Um so it was a really kind of humble, kind of not very pretty little cupboard. Um, hopefully by the time we've finished, it'll be it'll be much nicer. I think maybe at some areas of these as well, I'm going to put them between the feathers too. I might just do these big long ones down the bottom gold, and we'll see what sticks. Because not all areas of your brush always make contact all the time, so. Oh, but we'll see how we go with this. So uh, what you do with this uh, adhesive is you've never used it before is you just let it dry until the white goes away and it's no longer, um, you can see the white, it's then ready to kind of use. Um, you just, um, when it's tacky, I'll come back and I'll show you what to do next. So all I'm doing here is with my little strips, um, You'll find that once you do something like this, it's incredibly hard to find sometimes where you put it. So you just kind of have to kind of go with the flow until you find all your wee parts. Um, cutting it into strips was more a usefulness for me um, when I do the edges, but it kind of stops quite a lot of wastage. Once it's broken into little parts, just put it in a container and you can use it again just in its little kind of crumbly form. Um, don't waste it. It's too expensive to just kind of throw in the bin so keep all your little parts um but um you just kind of this is what you do you just apply it all over and again this is one of those fiddly 
jobs, but it's quite satisfying. It's very satisfying when you've got to brush it all off, but the covering it all up, you really need to have it all covered. So um, it's kind of good if you keep it on the paper um, and just do this. And this is going to add just another layer of sparkle, and that's what the challenge was about. Um, sparkle. So I'm just going to go ahead and cover this whole thing with the gold and then I'll show you me brushing it all off and revealing the lines underneath. And they were quite rough lines. I wasn't being Picasso or anything. It was just a bit of fun, really. I mean, the whole project, these challenges are just fun to take part in. It's just a bit of fun. And if you want to do this at home, um, get a good um, image of a peacock feather and then, you know, the... the um, putting the um, the effect on underneath. I don't know what's wrong with my mouth today. Um, what's it called, Martin? Uh, a paintball. A paintball. <laughs> yes, Martin, you're right. It's a paintball. Um, putting the paintball underneath, I think, sets a really good background and a scene for anything. So you could maybe do roses. You could stencil on top of it. This is just a, a kind of starter for what you want to do. We can do paintballs with lots of different things. You can do them with acrylics. You can do them with resin. Resin's kind of not so environmentally friendly, but my paints are environmentally friendly and they, they dry just as well as others. And they, and they leave quite a nice texture as well, what I quite like. So anyway, I'm doing too much talking. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to cover this up. Yeah. Okay, so as I said, I was going to put this around the edge. I didn't put it right. A band I wanted it kind of like looking like it was kind of just like making a sort of border a sort of an irregular border so I just put it on in kind of strokes like that and it's just the same process as before I'm just rubbing off the excess making sure that I've got all the loose stuff brushed off normally in the shed I don't care how this goes but because I'm working indoors, I'm trying to keep my mess to the minimum. Um, hence the black bag. Normally I wouldn't do things like that. I wouldn't care. But yeah, it's a long time at the spring. And I've just said to Martin, I don't really particularly want to buy a new carpet. So um, although I fear already I might have to. Something happened earlier. And it wasn't me. Um, anyway, so... I'm going to get on and brush this off and the next thing I'm going to do is I need to make sure this is all off before I do the next part because we're getting close to putting the door back on but um, I've got an extra bit of sparkle that I want to put onto this. I'm going to have to make sure I get it all off the back of the door as well. You don't have to see the tidy up bit. Martin, is there any way you could reach over and grab me that glitter or is that just going to be... Yes. Actually, I'm going to get Martin to pause the camera while I just set up for this. This literally just arrived. So I'm going to put some to the test. So I'm going to put some in just a little bit in the bottom of this glass jar. And um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to add some tough coat sealer to it. Just a little bit. Just a tiny little bit. I'm going to try and make a liquid that I can paint onto this so that when it dries it adds me a little bit of sparkle. Um, that's how it looks. Yeah. So I'm just going to add some of this onto this now as well. Because you can never have too much. Now, where am I going to add it? I'm going to try and add it in between. And you can you can add um, glitter to um, sealer if you want to have a kind of glitter. I don't use a lot of these kind of glittery um, kind of boho sort of look I do. So, but when it's called for, I love glitter on clothes and sparkle on clothes. I, I just you know just don't tend to do it too much on my furniture. So this is all a little bit. Oh, that was quite thick that blob. 
I think this is good because it's it's giving it a little bit more movement, I think. And now I'm going real crazy with it. More is more. More up in here. And then I'll just work away down here. So the next time you see it, this will be all removed of the gold leaf. It'll be completely dry. Martin will have it back onto the piece. And um, we'll just talk about sealing. Okay, so the gold leaf's all finished, all brushed off. What I did was I did order some of the relief outliner. I'll get Martin to link it um, in the description. It's actually really neat for doing things like this. And I wasn't exactly happy. So all I did was in between all my bigger strokes, I just did the outliner. That's all I've done. I went round the jewels and I did that tiny little pattern. So I didn't think that, you know, I'll show you all. There you go. So I'm going to get Martin to fit this back on my cabinet. Uh, what I'll do is I think I'll seal this separately. My sealer, I'm going to be using French sheet uh, tough coat. I'll seal all this, we'll put this back onto the air, and then it's for staging. Before I seal it, I've decided that I just want something to kind of break it up. I don't want to put gold, any more gold onto it. I want all the design to be on the front. So what I've done is I've got some sandpaper here, and all I'm going to do is kind of knock back some of the edges here. Well, all of the edges right now just to kind of give it a bit of a rustic look, just to shabby it up a bit. Just here and there, not... It's too pristine for me, I don't... It's not... Um, it's not worn enough. So I'm just going to do that, kind of round about it, take, knock some of it back a bit, and then what we'll do is we'll seal it. So we're finished. I brought it over to the stable um, just to put it on my staging wall for photographs, but it gives you an idea of the piece in context. It was just a humble little bedside cabinet, pot cupboard, nothing very exciting about it. Um, how did I do it? I did a, just a really kind of, not too much of a blend, just run the colours all into each other, sort of peacock colours. I did a paint pour on the door. I, this is where my, my sparkle and glitter and jewels came in. I added those to my paint, my feathers. I did some relief. I did some gold leaf, changed the knob, and obviously I painted inside as well. Um, so it's a whole refresh. It's all sealed, ready to go. So I'd like to thank Meg from Lovely Jubbly Furniture for um, putting on this challenge. And um, if you go to our description box, you'll see everybody else that's taken part and you can have a look and see what they've done. Um, I've been Leo from Made by Marley. Thanks very much for watching. And if you haven't already subscribed and you've watched this video and you fancy subscribing, I do a whole heap of furniture art um, on anything, really. And um, if you're already one of my subscribers, um, well, you know what you're gonna get anyway. Um, Leave me a comment, tell me whether you liked it and push the bell notification and that's it for today. Thank you. Bye-bye.